Hello and welcome back to another out of spec detailing video. Today we've got the Rivian R1S in the shop. We've been getting it nice and dirty for you guys. So we're gonna film a couple videos talking all things detailing. In this one, we're really gonna focus on the interior. So looking at, um, we've had some videos with dogs going in and out of it, kids in and out of it. So it's nice and dirty inside. We're gonna talk do's and don'ts, how to vacuum out dog hair today how to also take care of the vegan leather in here. And uh, I think this will be a really, really interesting one. Let's jump inside. All right, so let's take a look at the current state of the vehicle. So jumping in here, we've got some kids that were up front playing with the touchscreen. We've got fingerprints everywhere. We've got some nice boogers, it looks like here. Uh, just kind of, in general, really kind of grimy. Also noting, we've had dogs up here on the armrests and it is holding up extremely nice, just a little dirty. We're gonna go through how to clean this because this is definitely a little bit different than maintaining normal leather. This is vegan leather, so essentially a vinyl product um, on the seats here. Now back here is where we've got a lot of work to do. So we've had dogs back here. We've got dog slime all over the windows here for one back here. I know that was from my personal dog, Stella, from the video over on the Out of Spec Reviews channel. Nice slime there. And I'm glad that it actually got on the wood because I specifically want to talk about how to clean that. We've got tons of dog hair back here and just generally quite filthy. This is kind of the adventure vehicle, right? So you're going to be taking this out off-roading, put the dogs in the back, put the kids in here. It's going to get filthy. So we're going to go through and talk through that. So let's first start off probably with carpets and stuff like that. These are kind of an array of tools and products I use to get dog hair out. It's one of those things that can be very tricky, very frustrating, very time consuming to do. So let's start off kind of at the basics. So we've got a normal shop vac or a vacuum. This is another one, kind of a bougie detailers thing to have, but a Dyson. Why I like this is the Dyson hair wrap on here. Very good for quickly picking up um, dog hair. So I use this quite often in my personal cars, um, as well as if we're gonna like really, really start getting into a lot of dog hair using stuff like these two Lily brushes here. So they're a rubber silicone type and you basically scrape this along here. We're gonna show you all the different tools, how they work well, what they're good at, what they're not great at. Um, as well as attachments like this that are specifically made to single-handedly scoop up the hair. Because with these, you kind of have to scrape it, go back through, vacuum it, it's kind of tricky. Now on the pro level, this is something we use called a tornator. And what this essentially does is hooks up to an air compressor. You can blow everything out. This is really good for getting heavy dirt that gets in here. Like I said, we've had four dogs in here. There's crumbs everywhere. This is the perfect tool for that. So I think we'll first start out going from pro all the way back down to like the DIY, just straight vacuuming and see what works best and see what doesn't work on the Rivian R1S. So what I'm first gonna do, we've got quite a bit of dog hair back here. So just everywhere. So I'm gonna first start off, this is what I normally start my details off with. So I'll come in, blow everything out. Um, actually, I typically vacuum this first, getting all like the big crumbs, but we're just gonna show you here on this how this tool works. So we're just gonna come in here, blow this hair out and show you how crazy this is. So I don't know if you wanna come over here, but I mean, that literally took 90% of that off. A few little dog hairs here and there. Um, may come back in here with a few brushes. It just depends. It really depends on how um, ingrained this dog hair is. I actually really like this carpet on here. It's not a pain in the butt. I know my Tesla Model 3, especially in the back, has this really weird carpet in it, and it can be very tricky to get dog hair out. That's the most pro way. On this side, I'm gonna show you what just straight vacuuming looks like compared to the Tornator. All right, so let's talk through some other tools here. So. Again, what I would typically do when a car like this would come in for detail, I would go through vacuum out all the big chunks first because you don't want to be just having crumbs going absolutely everywhere with this. You want to get a good vacuum in there first, just showing you this for demonstration purposes. Now we had kind of an idea off camera here of taking this and plugging it into the actual onboard air compressor of the Rivian. 
Um, the unfortunate part is I use all high flow stuff here, so this wouldn't work with the connectors, but I'd be curious to see if you could actually get the proper connections on this, if it may keep up, because that would be kind of cool just to be able to blow this thing out quickly with the onboard compressor. I think it'd be really neat. So on that same back panel here, we're gonna try a few more things. I wanna show you guys some of the DIY stuff because most of you may have a shop vac, not necessarily have the ability to have a tool like this. Um, a lot of people have Dysons laying around and this is a tool that I've really, really come to love um, as far as detailing. So let's come over here again and we're gonna basically split this up into four quarters. So this was our tornado section. What I really like with this is it takes the dirt and blows it away. So you can already see a huge difference. Again, we had four dogs back here, so just absolutely filthy. I'm gonna set this on low suction and try it out. In all honesty, that looks pretty incredible. So if you've got a Dyson at home, you need the hair attachment for it and it literally picks this up. Again, I think this is really based on the nice carpet they use in this. Um, it doesn't seem to hold dog hair that bad. We had two golden retriever, three golden retrievers actually, um, and another dog with kind of coarser hair. So we're not seeing a lot of that, mostly golden hair back here. Now this is another tool I use. So this is called the Lily Brush. And what you do with this is essentially just come in here and you just start working it. it takes a little elbow grease to use, but this really gets some of that deep dog hair in there. The problem with this tool, but I still use it, is that it's kind of a multi-step tool. So with these two, you're blowing it away or sucking it up. And then this one, you have to kind of do this, get it in a certain area, come back in and vacuum. Nonetheless, still works pretty well. You're not picking up the dirt with this, so that's something to consider versus the Dyson. We're gonna come over here and just use a regular shop vac and see what looks and works the best for this car. All right, so finally, let's use our last quarter here and we're just gonna come in and do this. Immediately noticing it really doesn't pick up the dog hair that well, like at all. Still here after going over it. And this is a pretty high performance shop vac as well. So that's why I use these tools in tandem together. So come back in. I'm pretty amazed with this Dyson, to be honest. This just works awesome. It's not even on max. Let's try max level here. Looking pretty good. Again, just a single tip vacuum really struggles to pick this up. I also want to show another tool. This is kind of interesting. So this tool, um, I believe is called the for real. Very interesting. But basically this goes on here. It's got a similar rubber tip to what the Lily brush does. So it's essentially a two in one tool. So you can use this and kind of come in here and pick that up just as you're doing it. Whereas again, if you come in here and just try and vacuum it, it takes a lot more to pick that hair up. It just stays ingrained in there. That's why these rubber silicone things are just so awesome to use. So I wanna quickly talk here. We just folded this seat up. We've had some kid seats in here. Um, I wanna talk about this, cause this is something I often see. I've already got the vacuum running. But what happens in here is these crumbs get in these cracks. Now over time actually, and I see this a lot, is that if you don't get this vacuumed out, it can start to cause wear, especially on the threads, because if you spread this open, there are actual threads in here. So you wanna make sure you're cleaning these out often. What I like to do is take a tip like this and you can come in here, immediately just pick this all up, but you'll notice I'm still missing quite a bit in here. So you can put your hand down here, relieve pressure and come in here. Now you're not trying to scrub this because you can damage leather and vinyl in this case, but you just wanna make sure you're picking all this up. Another thing that's kind of interesting to note on these seats, they've got a lot of perforations. In this area here, we've got some that I'm not sure you can suck these up. So what I typically do with these, I take a toothpick and essentially lightly tap that in it's gonna go under the seat typically, but these can get really nasty and over time really start wearing on this. So really important to get those out as well. Now let's also talk down here, cause this is 
a very different um, material. That's extremely loud. So let's talk down here as well, because this is quite different material of carpet. Now in the past, what I've seen a lot is that this holds quite a bit of dirt and grime because this is a little bit different weave than was on the back of the seats. What I would typically do is use a tornado on this. Um, again, that's the more pro instead of DIY, but you can still use a shop back on this. Also noting that these are really interesting to clean as well. These are not carpet. They are almost like an outdoor chair material. Um, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on how to clean and vacuum those as well. But definitely when you come in here, as you notice on these, it's actually picking up pretty decently, but over time you get a lot of sand in between these. So a tool like the Tornator may be a good investment if you're taking this thing off road, in the desert, whatever it may be, um, in the mountains when you get a lot of dirt in and out of here. But again, coming in here, you can just quickly vacuum all these. It's important to make sure you're getting all of these cracks and crevices not leaving food in here because that can start to cause a lot of smells as well in the vehicles. So I think next, um, let's talk leather care and how to clean it. Okay, this is a very simple regimen for cleaning down leather, dashboards, areas like the steering wheel. Over here, all of your high traffic areas, this is safe to use on plastic, on leather, on vinyl, anything like that. Now. What you can do, it depends on how dirty the seat is. So we've definitely got a little bit of slobber. We're gonna show some back here. So this is CarPro inside and a throwaway towel. I buy these at Sam's Club because I single use towels on the interior. I detail a lot of clients' cars, so I don't wanna be mixing those, trying to clean them. They just get really nasty and grimy. So what you can do here is just immediately come in and spray this down. Now this is, if it's not super dirty, you can simply wipe this down and it is really pretty clean already just doing that. Again, this car had a few kids inside and out. You can see some fingerprints everywhere, dog slobber. It really just depends, but this is a good kind of maintenance routine. Every week, every couple of weeks, depending on how much the car is getting used, come in and wipe that out. Now, let's come down here on the seat because we've definitely got some stained, this looks like kid boogers, nice and yummy. So what I'm gonna do is kind of pre-treat that. So I'm gonna hit this. Now, it is kind of interesting to talk about here because we've got perforated leather. We don't wanna soak this, but it is okay to get decently wet. Um, so let's just clean this half like we would be cleaning at my detail shop. I've got just a tiny brush here. I use these for like lug nuts. I've got interior and exterior specific ones. And essentially all you do is come in here and agitate it. Again, this is for a little bit more um, dirtier surfaces, but you can come in and really clean that nice and easy. It takes a couple of seconds. I'm gonna probably let that sit and you basically wipe this away. This is a very, very simple routine to do on the interiors. And as it kind of breaks this away, this may take multiple times to get something like this off. The biggest thing with interiors is making sure it doesn't get too bad. I know it's nice and easy to get these things just, you know, oh, let's do it next week and forget about it. But when you start getting like a lot of crumbs in here, that's when your leather and interior really starts to look terrible, especially on bolsters here. We wanna make sure that we're properly cleaning these. Um, something interesting to note, talking about hydrating leather, anything like that. I do not use any leather conditioners. I haven't probably for the last six or seven years of detailing and I've never had an issue. What I do is keep this routine, wipe it down often and it looks pretty incredible. But this bolster is already starting to get slightly shiny. So let's just come in here and again, just come in with the brush, quickly hit it. And it's literally as simple as that. What I really like about this cleaner um, is that it leaves no residue. Leather, vinyl should not be shiny. We'll also show how to clean um, steering wheel and more high traffic areas like this. We're gonna do like a 50-50 here, seeing how that looks. Here's the center armrest. So we've had dogs, 
I know um, Kyle and Alyssa's dog Blue was up on this. Really, really impressed with this material here because it's not scratching up a lot. Um, yeah, I really, really like that. Let's just quickly show again how to clean this. And this is why, I mean, this little setup here you have. So you buy a bottle of this. I would recommend buying it by a gallon because it's just more cost effective, not super expensive. Um, you can dilute it differently based on how strong it needs to be. So you can let this agitate on here. And again, this is probably a $10, $12 brush that I'm using here. Just come in here, quickly hit this, wipe it down, and it's gonna bring back that OEM, just nice satin look. It's not sticky. Um, that's why I really love using this interior cleaner. Next, we'll talk um, on doing the actual steering wheel, because this, again, another hotbed for lots of grease and grime. Um, I know Kyle, being that I've done a few cars for him, very particular about steering wheels. He likes to wash his hands before, which I really appreciate because these just get disgusting over time. So I'm gonna hop on over the other side and show you some tips and tricks on the steering wheel. All right, here at the steering wheel, a few things we wanna be mindful of. We've obviously got screens here. We don't want to just directly spray on the screen. So what we can do, say you're weekly cleaning this, spray onto your rag. I also like to fold these in quarters. Um, I see a lot of people try and do one of these numbers. And a lot of the time what happens is you've got fingertip points and you create streaks and leather and stuff like that. So if you fold this into a quarter, you get more even pressure on it. That's how you can avoid streaks on all areas in detailing, windows, dashboards, anything like that. So let's say, okay, this dashboard is actually a little dusty right now. You can take this, quickly wipe it down, flip to the dry side, and already, look how much dust we had on that. Just kind of hooning this thing around and picked up a little grime. So I would say for weekly maintenance, you can do one of these. So just quickly come in, scrub this around, flip, dry, and it's ready to go. Now in the detailing business that I run here, I deal with some really, really nasty steering wheels. Now, if I was going to attack that, I would spray a little bit more on my brush here, come in here, gently agitate. That's a big thing when you're using a brush. You're using, getting kind of deeper down into the pores, releasing that dirt and grime. As we know, steering wheels, especially in Colorado, winter time, people use a lot of lotion on their hands because their hands get nice and dry. This can remove all of that. And it's such a safe cleaner on areas like this. Again, making sure you're diluting it, but you can also use this full strength if you feel it's necessary. Biggest thing with steering wheels, you don't want them sticky. You don't want them um, kind of slipping out of your hands when you're driving these things. So I really, really like this cleaner. Um, I think next we've actually got some pieces over here on the wood. So I wanna talk about the one on the back, the dog slobber, but we've got some like fingerprints here. And I think what we'll do is just use this same product. Big thing with this wood, you do not want to saturate this. This is an open grain wood. So what you wanna come in and do, just gently wipe this down. You can do it by spots. So we've got some more, I would assume kid slobber and stuff up here. And just quickly do that. You don't wanna saturate it. You don't wanna come in here and just spray this down, get it soaking wet. So I'm gonna hop into the back seat. We're gonna talk about dog slobber because this can be really, really tricky and nasty to clean. So hopping around the back here. Now, an interesting note, um, notice how these seat belts are. So if you have it laying over here and you're trying to get people in and out of this, you don't wanna be folding this down because what it can do is cause impressions in the leather. Rivian's kind of engineered this little hole here. So anytime I would move this, I would definitely try and kind of slide these down because you don't wanna be leaving impressions in leather. My personal Tesla Model 3, I put both dogs in the back and those seat belts kind of stick up like this and it drives me crazy to have those every time I fold down the seats for them to get in and out of it. It's just kind of really annoying. One of those things you don't really wanna see. Nonetheless, let's talk up here. So this is kind of a tricky area. Why I say that? We've got three different materials here and a charge port. Now, the big thing here, you're not gonna to wanna to take this and spray it on this, getting this charge port wet because you don't wanna short this out. Um, we've also got the wood here, similar to how we did up there. Now, these dog slobber stains can be really tricky to remove. So in this instance, what I'm gonna do, spray directly onto my brush, 
I'm gonna come in here, gently hit the plastic first. Now again, you wanna avoid oversaturating this. So you don't wanna get it super soaking wet, but we're gonna to have to get it a little wet here. And before this really saturates into here, just gonna wipe that away. Um, now, if these sit quite a while, they can get really kind of nasty. I know personally, my two dogs have some of the nastiest slobbers out there. Um, I think these are actually both from them being in the car the other day. So I'm pretty used to this seeing it everywhere. But um, yeah, pretty simple to do. So this is a nice little maintenance routine. You get yourself a bottle of CarPro inside, your favorite cleaner. I also use um, PNS Interior Express Cleaner, I believe it's called. Very, very good product, very economical as well to buy in big gallons, but it's just maintaining this. You don't wanna let it get to the point where you're like, call Colton and have him do a full interior detail. The bolsters are shot, like there's crumbs, milk, you know, Cheerios everywhere. So just maintaining it, I think is a very, very good point. One of the last things I wanna talk about is screens because obviously in the new vehicles, we have a lot of screens around want to talk about how to properly clean them and um, see if Rivian has a screen cleaning mode because I know my Tesla does and you don't want to be pressing all these buttons all over it making it really tricky to clean. So we've gone through a few modes here. I'm not seeing a screen cleaning mode. It's not the end of the world but just be aware that you may be kind of touching a few things here. So you may want to be in a screen that you're not going to be changing settings that may be kind of weird. So again I'm gonna come in now. This is just a quick detailer. Now, I will note this is a Gion bottle with Adam's waterless wash in it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, again, I wanna avoid spraying this. So I'm gonna come directly into my towel. And again, this is Adam's waterless wash in it. And I'm gonna just come in here with a fresh towel, wipe this down. You're gonna flip it over and do just a nice dry on it. Um, it's important to have different towels for screens. So again, I buy these towels at Sam's Club because I basically use these once and pitch them. You can also clean, clean this front display here. I do want to note because I've cleaned a few Rivians before. Up here, this trim can be very tricky to clean. If you use something like the CarPro inside on this, it creates a lot of streaks. So after you're done cleaning your screen, so we've got central, um, kind of your in front of your uh, instrument cluster here and then one in the back. What I would recommend doing kind of towards the end of the detail, coming in here, using the same Adam, Adam's waterless wash in here and just quickly wiping this down. Um, it can be kind of tricky sometimes even, this leaves a little bit of fingerprints here that take a while to get off. What I've used also on here is a product like Windex that has some cleaning ability in it or a glass cleaner. That's also a good point to bring up too. I think we should clean one window back there with all the dog slobber, talking about why we do not use Windex in the detailing industry. Now this, if you're having dogs back here, even kids, kind of nasty hands, running your hands around here, making this wind window really, really dirty. I know this is a lot of dog slobber. I deal with this all the time with my dogs. So let's talk window cleaning here. So again, I really like this Adams waterless wash on windows. I do use some different mixtures on um, glass cleaners, but I think this should be plenty to clean this up. What you don't wanna use and what I talked about before is Windex. Why do we not use Windex? Normally people get windows tinted. Now, the issue with that is Windex has ammonia in it. You can get it without ammonia, but what ammonia will do is actually break down tint over time. So you don't wanna be spraying Windex on here and uh, have window tint. Now you can use it if you don't have window tint, but I really don't like it as a glass cleaner. It's just not a solid product. So what I've got here, I've got a glass cleaning towel. So this is a lot shorter weave on here. Um, and then I've also got my same, same screen cleaning towel. And again, I put everything into fours to make it easy to not come in here and streak it. So first off, what we're gonna do is you can spray this down. Now you don't wanna get it like crazy saturated. Um, you are gonna get it a little bit here. It's not a problem to get this cleaner on there as well. I like to spray a little on here, come in here. So we've got the wet side as our first wipe. 
you want to make sure you get all your corners. What really is helpful is folding this into quarters and you can get right up in those edges because those cracks and crevices really, really get dirty. And then you're going to flip over to your dry side. Come in here. I like to use kind of a cross hatch pattern doing it both ways. I'm going to come back in here with my dry towel um, and just do a final wipe on this. And you're going to have pretty crystal clear windows. Now we definitely need to clean the outside, but we're going to save that for the next video doing a full exterior wash. You can see this window has been down a little dirty on the outside. The truck's filthy right now. So really excited to jump over onto that one. Um, as far as interior detailing, what I would say the biggest thing is, is maintaining it. Don't let it get super bad. Vacuum it out as often as you can. I do want to quickly touch on these floor mats because these are kind of weird. Um, I've cleaned Kyle's Rivian multiple times on the inside and these things hold a ton of dirt. Let me show you here. I'm actually gonna pop these out. So the interesting thing with these is they don't necessarily look dirty, right? They look pretty clean, but they're this really interesting texture. It's almost like a plastic. Now on the other side, we've got carpet. So what I've done with these is I take this, flip it around, and I use my tornado to blow out the dirt. You would be shocked how much these hold. So over time, that may be something good to do. Other than that, I'm not really sure of a good way to get that out because literally dirt falls in between these cracks and crevices here. Um, so really just kind of keep that in mind, maybe every six months or a year, I think a tornado would be a good investment, especially if you have dogs, especially if you have kids and an air compressor at home. If you don't, you can kind of do what you can. So I think for the interior video, um, this is about kind of all the main topics to cover. Finished up with the interior now. Hopefully some of those tips and tricks were kind of interesting for you guys. And I really wanted to find a way to have some DIY stuff to do. So some kind of maintenance in between um, instead of sending your car only to someone like myself to do a full deep clean on it, just keeping those crumbs, those hand marks, those dog slobbers, dog hair, just keep it minimized as possible. Every month or so, I would definitely try and kind of go through it, just quickly vacuum it out. Um, but yeah, so you guys are gonna see a couple more videos with this specific Rivian R1S. So we'll put links to those in the description. We're gonna go through full paint analysis. Um, that'll probably come out before this interior video does. And then we're gonna do kind of washing as well. But hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thanks so much for joining us for another out of spec detailing video.